green chili chicken meatloaf. And don't forget, the only way you should ever have avocado is using avocado oil to spray your pants. Avocados, guacamole, Ga nasty, guacanasty. And you're just gonna pat it like a bad thing. A little feisty tonight because we got babysitter. Yeah. And we're back with another recipe. This time we decided to make dinner tonight and we are having a green chili chicken meatloaf. And we have shown you how we grind our organic chicken breast from Costco. And we're using that tonight in our recipe for our meatloaf. The other day, my wife, she did this. She was grinding up some chicken. I've got two pounds out. I have one third cup of Hatch 505 green chili. You get it at Costco. Blog, check the blog. And then one medium sized organic egg. I have three quarter cups of Italian style breadcrumbs, salt, pepper, garlic granules to taste. So I'm gonna get to that. But before I do, I gotta get these potatoes in because we're also having mashed potatoes. Six medium sized potatoes here and I'm just gonna cut them up in cubes, all about the same size because I want them to cook evenly. I have a pot of boiling water here and then I'm just gonna throw them in the water. We're gonna boil them for like 15 minutes and get that going. In the meantime, I am going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Just get it all, get everything start mm, Mix it, mix it up and don't forget, glass of wine. All right, so I'm gonna bring you in, or maybe you can see right there. I think you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and just start with these potatoes. All I'm gonna do is cube them up. And again, I'm looking for consistency in size, so they will cook evenly. I've cut up my potatoes, cubed them even slices, cubes, shapes, whatever. They are going into this pot of boiling water and I'm gonna set a timer for 15 minutes. Now that the timer has been set for 15 minutes, I'm just gonna let them boil. I'm gonna check them at the end of 15 minutes, stir occasionally, don't want anything burning at the bottom. Now, time for That's right, the loaf of meat. Get yourself a loaf pan. You need to have a loaf pan. It's important for this recipe. Also, don't forget your other said ingredients. And I'm not gonna use a lot of salt, mainly because the green chili has a lot of like flavors and things in it. And it also has a lot of garlic in it as well. Plus the breadcrumbs, they've got it. So you don't need a lot. Don't, so think about how much you're gonna put in before you put it in. So I'm gonna put my egg, one medium sized egg goes right in. And then I have three quarter cups of breadcrumbs in here. One third cup of hatch green chili goes in there. And I'm gonna move this here so you can see. Now, garlic and salt and pepper to taste. We like garlic. Now, I know that there's some already in the green chili, so I won't overdo it, but a good amount for us. Keeps us healthy, keeps the vampires away, because tonight we're watching a scary movie. And we like black pepper, <laughs> which is, Spicy, you know, chili and black pepper, but also the green chili is spicy, so 
just keep an eye on how much pepper you put in and then watch this look seriously just a pinch a pinch of salt it's all it's all you need if you have all those other things now you don't have those other ingredients uh, season it properly that's important oh, and then the next thing is is for those that have taken sacred vows and are married now's a good time to take your rings off because you don't want them getting all mashed up in into your meatloaf so here we go and before I get insane here with my hands I'm gonna grease this I do it over the sink so I don't make a mess all I'm gonna do is start mixing this up with my hands I think everything's well incorporated. And then I'm gonna drop it in to our greased pan and try not to make too much of a mess here. Put it in there and you're gonna spread it out evenly so that you don't end up with parts that are cooked unevenly. So there's a method to all of it. You don't just dump it in and throw it in the oven. You need to do this so that it comes out into a nice loaf cooked evenly coast to coast all right i'm gonna wash my hands and then i'll show you what it looks like this is what it looks like here it is in the pan 350 degrees i'm gonna drop this bad boy in here and i'll set a timer for Oh, I'm gonna do 25 minutes. So set his timer for 25 minutes because what you're gonna do is just check it and when it's getting really close to being done, you pull it out, then you put the sauce on top and you throw it back in for like another five minutes or so. But you wanna make sure it's like ready. So check it about 20 minutes. If it needs to go the full 25, you're good. You know, just, just keep an eye on it. Now. Make sure your potatoes are still boiling. We got six minutes left. Give them a nice little stir and just take one out and don't feel it with your hands, but just press it against the side of the pot and it's still pretty hard. We'll be back. The timer for the potatoes went off 15 minutes. They are not ready. I'm gonna give them a nice little stir. And from this point on, you're just basically checking it as you go. I'm gonna put a timer. They feel to me like they need another 10 minutes. I'm gonna put it on for 10 more minutes. But I'm checking in between just to be safe. Now, the sauce. Here's the magic stuff for the top of our meatloaf. Let me bring you in so that you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so here I have Ah, I gotta look, look at it. My wife's been giving me notes. I have one third cup of organic dark brown sugar. Is it brown sugar? Not dark brown. <laughs> <laughs> but I prefer dark brown. <laughs> yeah, you do. Okay, start over. <laughs> so here I have one third cup of organic brown sugar. My wife prefers dark brown sugar. We don't have it. One quarter cup of ketchup, one heaping teaspoon of spicy brown mustard, and then Worcestershire sauce to taste and for consistency. So after you mix all of these together, you're gonna check the consistency. You may need to add a little bit more of something or the other, but you want a good thick sauce you don't want it to be too runny so let's just get to it you might like a little more or less of one thing or the other if you don't like Worcestershire sauce then just swap it do something different but here we go this is it and I will show you the consistency all right, the mashed potatoes are done. Here is the consistency you're looking for. They have a soft edge or starting to fall apart on the outside and you can look through it and it's not a complete like solid. I'm 
pushing up against the side, it's breaking apart. Those are ready. So I turn the heat off. There we go. Here is how we do garlic mashed potatoes. I'm gonna get some salt. I'm gonna get some pepper. I'm gonna get garlic granules and some milk. Then I'm taking this, I'm gonna do a half stick of butter. Half stick of butter. If you want more butter, put more butter. Okay, again, no exact recipe here. You're just doing it however you need to do it. Then I'm gonna throw some garlic in here. I'm just looking because I know how much garlic we like. I'm gonna throw some in there, get them out. These are garlic mashed potatoes. If you don't like them, don't put them in. Don't put garlic in, just have regular mashed potatoes. Pepper, and we like pepper, so fair amount for us. Salt to taste, and... Now I'm going to use some milk, and I'm using the milk a little sparingly because I'm looking for a nice consistency here and I don't want it to get too runny. What I'm gonna do is check it for a few things. Understand that when you put this in the fridge, it thickens up. And then when you reheat it, you gotta add a little bit of milk. So it's okay to have it like a little thick at the beginning. Mm. That's really good. I, I don't think I'm gonna touch it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have my wife check it here. All right, now that our mashed potatoes are done, I I'm gonna show you what they look like in here. This is the consistency that we like. They're nice and fluffy. You can, they'll hold a peak. They're nice and good. Put those there. But it looks good. And the reason I say that is because when I look at it like this, hey, it looks like it's cooking up top. Everything is looking fine. I can tell it needs just a hair more, but this is what we're looking for, right? We're looking for something like this, because it's gonna finish cooking after we put the sauce on. So, stop this timer. And it's time to add our delicious sauce. So sauce it up. So here's the meatloaf with the sauce on it. We throw it back in the oven, five, 10 minutes, and just keep an eye on it. Time to check the meatloaf. I did not make mixed vegetables. We are only having meatloaf and mashed potatoes and wine, of course. So I'm gonna get all this out and then I'll bring you up for a close-up shot. Now you can splurge on the mashed potatoes because you've done such a good job on using ground chicken for your meatloaf. Higher protein content, less fat. It's all good. I know that there's some sugar in there and that's fine, but it's a healthier version, better way, you know, it's going into it. Here you go. Here are the mashed potatoes 
There's also the meatloaf. I'm trying to give you that inside shot there. Mm -mm -mm. You can see the green chili. You can see the sauce coming down, just enough. Healthy serving of those mashed potatoes. This is gonna be delicious. So make it for yourself. We're having dinner, so I'm gonna sign off.